Okay, in this video, let's talk about how does the graph of the integral function, the integral going from 0 to x of t to the t dt looks like. And this is for the people who want to find an answer to the integral of x to the x power, like this. Unfortunately, we do not have an answer for this, not even with a special function. But with this being done, we will be able to see how does the graph of the answer to this looks like. Of course, off by a constant because of the vertical shift. It's okay, in my opinion, it's good enough, isn't it? So now, just like what I did in the previous video, as I said, I'm going to propose that let's call this to be x with a two like this, right? Because we have t to the t, two of them. And the input is of course x. Let's just give this a name. It's like a special, special one. Again, this is between you and I only, okay? Well, maybe you and me. I don't know if it's you and I or you and me, but you know, yeah, you know, it's our secret. That's the deal. Okay, so here we go. First of all, let's talk about some special values. Of course, in this case, let's just define x to be greater than zero for simplicity purpose. I don't want to get into complex world yet. I don't even know how to get there, actually. In this case, let's see. Let's look at x2 of zero. In this case, it will be just going from zero to zero, and that should be pretty easy to see that the answer to that is just zero. Although, when we have t to the t, when t is exactly zero, it's technically undefined, but let's take a nice convention that that's equal to one, right? Okay, so that's good. And perhaps you can also have another famous result, x2 of one, meaning the integral going from zero to one of t to the t dt. You guys can check out a Monte video or Dr. Pan's video, and you can actually express that into a really nice series. But I'll just tell you guys the numerical value for that. 0 0.78 something something, right? I'm going to make a scratch by hand, so I don't need a lot of decimal point anyway, right? So these are the values that we have. And if you would like, we can just make a sound graph already. So here we go. Here we go, here we go. Starting at zero, and uh, let's say this right here is my one. And 0 0.78, let's say is right here, right? It's approximately 0 0.78, namely x2 of one. So we have a point like this, and a point like that. Pretty good, huh? But do not connect the dots with a straight line, of course. We have to do more work. Here we go. In order to see the shape of a function, we will have to talk about its derivatives. Well, in this case, we define x2 to be this right here, right? So when we differentiate with respect to x, of course, we can use the first fundamental theorem of calculus. We can just put the x right here and right here. And the good thing is that the derivative x is just one, so the chain two doesn't really matter. This right here will just give us x to the x power. That's all, very nice. So yeah, that's why I said this is the answer for that. Okay. This right here, hopefully it's not hard to see that when x is greater than or equal to zero, well, if you take a convention x is equal to, if you take zero to a zero, if x is exactly zero, it's one. But, yeah, just, you know what? This is always greater than zero, if you would like. And in fact, you can kind of narrow it down, but like, let's not go there. Uh, yeah. You can look at this graph nicely. I think I've done the graph on x to x before, but you know, let's just say it's always greater than zero, so the function is always increasing. And when x is approaching zero, this is approaching one, so you can expect the slope is going to be like a, like one, like this, right? Anyway, let's get the second derivative. So that will be x2 double prime, like this. And let's do this in our head. The derivative x to the x power, it's going to be x to the x times one plus ln of x power, like that. And of course, do the usual business, we have to find the point of inflection. So to do that, of course, let's set this equal to zero. And this is not going to be zero. This will be zero. And you will see that x has to be e to the negative one. That's the number we care. And let's see. Let's draw a number line for the second derivative test. We don't want zero, and we want to look at e to the negative one. Put a number in between of zero and e to the negative one. Say e to the negative two. This is always positive. If you have e to the negative two here, 
you get 1 plus negative 2 actually so you just get negative so this right here will give us a negative second derivative and right here if you pick that say 1000 you put in here you will get positive so you get a positive second derivative right so this is the second derivative now let's see the function is always increasing and this right here is we also care about this so let's put that down e to the negative one power it's about 0 0.3 something so let's put it down about right here so this is e to the negative one and if we want a point of inflection perhaps we should also get a special value for that in this case just use your work from alpha if you would like i will tell you this is approximately 0 0.28 i didn't do this in my head i did it on work from alpha 0 0.28 now draw to scale excuse my picture for that and we have a point like that okay and hopefully it's not hard to see that when we have x approaching zero so let's put down if the limit as x approaching to infinity x 2 of x this right here is just infinity right it's pretty easy to see so we have we, we should have enough information to make our graphs graph here we go starting right here the slope is like approaching one and then it's increasing but it's concave down so it's like this however the slope is never zero so it's not flat so it technically keep it like not flat okay and you just kind of turn up this right here should be like this and up okay so this is not uh po this is not there we go something like that Th this is not uh horizontal here we go and um, of course the more points that you have the better the graph will be yeah that should be pretty good so i claim this right here is the shape of the graph to the answer to the integral of x to the x power of course you can shift up shift down whatever you want right but the picture should look something like this if you have a way to make a much better graph, please let me know. You guys can send me an email. I can make some tweet or make some posts so that everybody else can see as well. And I think we'll all love to see that. Ah, a lot of fun to just create some new math and then, well, not like new math, it's just calculus, but just have fun to do some math, yeah? Yes. Anyway, as always, that's it.